Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're joining me from my previous channels, from YouTube, LinkedIn, Telegram, or other social media, uh, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Abhilash, and this channel is for my cool side projects. And I'll start with my first project, which is Agentic Control Framework. It's designed to make coding easier uh, to the experts and to the non-experts. It's mostly very apt for people who are white coding. Uh, if you are having workflow where you're using cursor or a platform which has MCP in it, this is exactly for you. And it will definitely improve the way that you are coding. There are different solutions right now. There are memory banks and there are other task managers. But this one, first of all, it's free. And second, it is very easy to use and it uses MCP. It, it just gets plugged in and it works flawlessly without any intervention of yours. You just need to write a prompt and takes everything to the next level. Um, stick around to see Agentic Control Framework in action. Here's a demo. I hope you like it. I know there is a big problem uh, with vibe coding. Is that every time we go to resolve any issues, the AI creates new issues. Like um, the first prompt is good, but if you give later on the prompt to make a complex project better, it just messes it up. Like how many times have you asked like Cursor or Claw or any AI that you want a simple fix, but it completely nukes the project. So for solving that, I'm bringing agentic control framework. It's a game changer. It gives you a CLI based task management and the most important, I think, and the best thing that I like about it, that I added MCP integration. So like you can use it in Claude, Windsor. I've used it in um, Cursor. At least I've tested all the three and it works pretty well. You can also use it in Klein, but Klein has another built-in mode, which is a kind of similar, but not exactly the same. This gives you a more manual picture of it. So I can walk you through it. As it says, it's a comprehensive task management system. So it not just does the task management, it also does uh, persistent memory. The AI can come back to its task that it was doing. And so it knows it has made a mistake. Then it goes to the previous step. It's kind of when you do a git commit and then you can go to the previous commit. It, that memory, it kills hallucinations. Broken code goes away. Basically, it breaks down big projects into neat and clean manageable steps so your AI doesn't get lost trying to build everything in the universe in one go, right? And the result is that it slashes the bugs and errors by a huge, huge margin. So I will show you an example with and without. I made a multiplayer game. It's called <laughs> Bot Run. It's just a tiny prompt. This is my simple prompt. It says create simple, complete, infinite runner game called Bot Run in HTML5 Canvas. Features, cute eyes, on player character, beautiful dreamy moving backgrounds with clouds that change it as the games progress, complexity levels, increasing speed of the game over time and random obstacle distance. Get the name of the player and show the top three scores and first create a detailed PRD is the requirement document for the project. And I just go through this prompt with and without ACF. With ACF, I add something extra which says that then use agentic control framework to organize and complete the project set workspace initialize project parse the prd so these all intelligent features come in with the help of google gemini api the important thing is this is free gemini api is free but uh, there is something very similar called taskmaster uh, which does task management but yeah, it doesn't do a few more things like testing so most, another important aspect of ACF is that every task that it assigns it automatically adds a testing phase so you always know that the code is correct because it automatically does internal testing of each block or each sub task and task and then gives a regress testing after completing it as well you can see on the left is without ACF and on the right is with the ACF so this is my MCP server, it's very easy to add. So currently I shut off the MCP server and try to run. This is what we get without the ACF and this is the result. 
So you can see this is the result that I get. All of the problems in this. The mm, there is no obstacle yet. Makes the game that works automatically goes to game over because um, maybe the obstacle it created, but I can't see it. So it goes and goes to game over. And I tell that, oh, keeps on getting game over. And yeah, it tries to fix it and just fast forward it. And uh, let's see what we get after the fix. Yeah, so this is after the fix. Uh, I still don't see the obstacle and still it doesn't work. Now I'm going to switch on the uh, agentic control framework and run the same thing and try to create the game again. So agent again starts uh, executing. So now you see there are some important things. It creates a PRD and it calls a tool, MCP tool, parse PRD here. So this PRD, which is created here, goes through the task manager and starts creating these tasks. So there's this task.json, which is very detailed, but then I have a human view of it, which is task table.md, keeps on creating the tasks, deleted one task here. Yeah, basically deleted another task and added a few, which it found uh, suitable. It also adds subtasks uh, if required. It can elaborate each task. Now it's uh, generating. So if you see, there is this progress bar that keeps increasing. Uh, it's thirteen percent now. And there are two tasks that are done, and the progress is twenty-five percent now. It keeps on going thirty-eight uh, percent, and fast forward. And this is the JSON. Uh, it's very detailed. You can see the task is created at some point. It's updated at another point. There are subtask arrays. And there's timestamp on each log activity and it gives a message for each log that what it's trying to do. So this is how it has a context of memory. It's not exactly a memory bank, but it keeps a message on what it has done at what timestamp. So it can visit it back and it understands it doesn't need to restart it again from scratch. Most of the time with Claude especially, activity log just doesn't exist and it keeps on overwriting or making simplified versions and doesn't update the one that is already present. Let's go forward. 63% now the progress. All the high priority tasks are done. The medium priorities that are done, the progress is 88%. So humanly we can see what's happening and this is just one prompt. I have not given, given any other prompt yet. It just keeps on executing until it's complete. And this is now is 100% complete. So this is the game. Uh, as the previous one, we said that we need to enter the name of the player. It didn't give us that option. So here we get that option. Uh, you see, this is much more cuter. Um, and when it, so the board jumps and it squeezes a bit. Um, so what I will do is I'll go forward this game. Uh, is a better one where I try to cross obstacles obstacles here. So uh, you see the obstacles are of different width as well, different lengths. And the background, interestingly, is becoming darker because it's going to be nighttime soon. And uh, so you see now uh, it almost camouflages the uh, bot. And yeah, so if you use the ACF, uh, you can make big complex programs with minimum errors and i think you should give it a try so see you later so if you want to try out the agent control framework the link is in the description and the repo is on github so it's open source you can also try your own variants if you want uh, the bot run game that we made during this video is also on github and you can play I and Beverly tried to play it and it's a really fun reaction video that we have recorded which is here. Uh, so if you like my video, please like it. If you dislike the video, please dislike it. Comment if you have any questions and I'll see you later.